good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, final day of the session at 1230. Appreciate everybody coming today. So um, thanks a lot. I hope you appreciate it. So my name is Felicia Schwartz. Uh, Maybe. Click. Yeah. There we go. Uh, my name is Felicia Schwartz. I work for Pivotal. I work with a um, team of app transformation people who go to work with companies like yours to help modernize your applications so that they get the value of the cloud. Uh, hi, I'm Katie Toll. I was previously a Pivotal, Felicia's counterpart in the West Coast. I am now an associate director of the AI Innovation Lab at Ernst & Young. So let's get, it's a firm press, just so you know. Okay. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so you're here because you want to learn about how to scale agile, agile processes, and really bring all your teams into it, right? So before you do that, you have to kind of step back and think about where we came from. And I don't know if I'm dating myself in here, but for those of you who don't know, this is what a PRD used to look like, a project requirement doc. I hear some groans and some chuckles. And this one is uh, slightly larger than the biggest one I've ever written, which was about 100 pages. And you know, it's a, it's a good intention, right? Like you write this document because you want your development teams, your engineers, your, your DevOps, your security, InfoSec, all these different teams that you have to bring together to get a product out the door. And you're like, I'm gonna talk to everybody and I'm gonna figure out all the things that need to be done. And I'm gonna figure out contingency plans and staffing plans and it's gonna be magical. There's Gantt charts and it's perfect and it's wonderful. And then you get to delivery day and it looks a little bit like this. And I'm usually the person in the back pleading for help. Um, and you're kind of like, what, what just happened? Like, how did I get here? How is my manager standing on a desk yelling at me like, but the delivery date said this. Uh, and you know, you're, you're upset and you're wondering, you're like, but I had this PRD and it was perfect and had contingency plans. And the reality is that when you're working, you know, sometimes somebody gets sick. Sometimes we want to take vacations. Maybe one of your coworkers is lucky and they won the lottery and left. Um, things happen. Tasks take a little bit longer than you thought they would. It piles up and usually if anybody has ever worked as a QA in here, anybody? I was a QA at one point in a former life. Uh, usually you end up with your one month of testing ends up being like a day and everybody's mad at you <laughs> because you find bugs. <laughs> So you end up here, and then as this person's yelling, you finally get the thing out the door, and somebody goes, next time, this is not gonna happen. I know what we'll do. We're gonna be agile, and that's gonna fix everything. And you end up with this point to hair boss, because we've all had or have been this person or will be this person at some point in our lives, and you're like, it's gonna be great. Agile fixes everything. And I hear more chuckles, which means you've all been in this meeting or have had somebody say this to you. Okay, maybe. So you're like, I got an idea. I'm gonna take my super rock star guru, ninjas, whatever your company wants to call them, team. Put them together and they're gonna be awesome. And they're gonna deliver awesome products. And they're gonna do it super fast. And I'm gonna get this gold trophy, gold star cookie, however you wanna call it. And it's gonna be great. And I'm gonna do it a bunch of other times and it's gonna be super awesome, right? This is what we all think life is gonna be like. And so you think about it and you're like, all right, this is us. This is us in the future. This is what I have dreams about. We are going to be the blue angels of development teams. We are going to be flying super high, doing really cool tricks in the sky. And it's gonna be great. And then you get to your reality. And instead of having these really awesome blue angels doing amazing things and making crowds like ooh and awe, you end up with six tiny waterfalls. And instead of having one guy standing on a desk yelling what the heck's happening, you now have six stakeholders yelling what the heck is happening. So here's, this is you. And I like to joke, this is you on the 405 in LA in the summer and your air conditioner just went out. <laughs> And it just sucks, right? You're like, what the heck happened to my Blue Angels moment? So you're kind of thinking about it and you do that retro, you know, we're gonna pull everybody together. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about what happened. We're gonna, we're gonna solve this. And that's when you realize that you're just using a lot of agile words, but you're just talking about waterfalls. So you have a, 
an IPM, an iteration planning meeting, that just covers the PRD, that instead of having 300 pages, it's 300 tickets. <laughs> like, we've all been in this meeting. And you're like, well, surely there has to be an answer to this, right? Like, we cannot be the only company who has one really awesome team that's getting it right, and we can't scale it. So you do some Google searching. You might attend a conference or two. You're looking for answers. And you realize there's just a lot. Like, everybody's having this issue. Everybody's trying to solve this. No, that's not my dog, sorry. But you, you find all these things. Is it fast agile? Is it scaled agile framework safe? Like, what do I do here? The reality is that if there was one amazing solution that I could just apply to everything, that Google search would just be one thing. The real thing is that transforming your organization into this amazing lockstep, blue angels, no waterfall in sight, lots of trophies, is that it has to come from within. Everything has to come from in. Your leadership has to be on board. Your teams have to be on board. Everybody has to be living the change. So now that I've talked to you about this philosophical change, how do we actually get started? You have to press really hard. <laughs> okay, thank you. So what Katie talked about is oftentimes what I've seen, um, and I've worked, been doing this type of agile transformation, organizational transformation for a while now, um, everybody starts with that, the top tier people. But your organization, especially when you talk about large enterprises, you don't have thousands and thousands of people that are that good. You have people that are earlier in their careers. So how do you get this at the scale you want for your organization to actually be agile, not just a couple of rock stars being able to deliver in this method? So before you get started looking at your teams at the leadership level, you've got to get aligned, all right? And you need things happening top down, bottom up, so that everybody kind of is meeting in the middle and having the same thought. So as a leader, you need to make sure, very clearly define what's your vision as a company, what's the mission you're on, and what are the values. Um, as an example, for an automobile, automotive company, your, your vision could be, I want to make awesome vehicles, right? You get down to the mission, which will be a little bit more detail. You may say, I want, two, two different car companies may have different missions. One may say, I want to make the awesomest car out there. It's got the bells and whistles, can go faster than a, a, a rocket ship. Like luxury beyond belief. A little different than the car company that says, I want to make a car that can be bought by most families. It's affordable, gets great gas mileage, um, and everybody could buy it. Volume versus a niche market. Um, in addition to that, your people understand your values. What are we as a company? What do we value from our employees? Do we look at work-life balance? Are we looking for giving autonomy to our people? So identify this up front because this is going to, if your executives all agree to this, as you filter down throughout the organization, you could always go back to what these three things are and say, is my work aligned with this? Because if it's not aligned with this, you might be doing the wrong things, and you might be acting in the wrong way. If we're talking about team autonomy, but you've got somebody who's in a command control personality, does everybody know what the difference between those two things are? Team autonomy, just nods, thumbs up. <laughs> Okay. It's, a little, it's a little late in the day, so I don't think we need a lot of <laughs> um, If I'm very, I'm good at my job, I'm going to tell you how to do yours, that's command control. That's one way of working. There are certain, the military, and there are certain other areas where that is. And if executives are making that clear as that's how they want to run it, that should be clear to the people on the team. If they want to have more autonomous teams, then executives are saying, I'm going to talk about this but I'm going to put trust into my teams to execute on it, and I'm going to be there to unblock them when they get stuck. So whatever that your values are for your company, define them and make sure everybody is aware of that so that there's no confusion and no conflicts when you're out there. So everybody knows we are this, and everybody can then adjust their behavior because people will go back to what they're comfortable with um, instead of you know, just going to something because somebody tells them to do that. So the next thing you need to do, executives, define what you're going to be measuring. What are the things? So these are some of the ones that I look at um, that are somewhat common. 
So ROI, like you always have to, we're building products because we want an ROI. It may not happen in a month, a week, but we should be saying, what are the things we're looking at? What are the things we're looking to build these products for? Increase revenue, increase our market share. Identify those are the things. This is part of like your strategy that you're focused on. You want to cycle time idea to production. People are bringing in this agile methodology because they want to get things to market faster. You want to stay competitive. You want to stay relevant. You want to be out there before everybody else is in there and have saturated your market. So start looking. Business partner comes up with an idea. How long is it taking me to get to, to production? As executives and leaders in this world, you have to be able to remove the blockers that are hurting you here. Other things mean time to repair. Bugs, while we could try to minimize them, they're always going to pop up. Things we can't test is how quickly are we setting things up so that we could uh, recover quickly, minimal impact. Um, customer satisfaction, there should be things out there. Are, are you hitting metrics where your customers are going to your websites if you're building websites? Are they buying a product? Are they seeing the things you're building? Keep these in mind. Um, and the final thing, most important, are your people happy? You're growing teams. You want to make sure they're happy. Turnover is so... So bad. It's, I always found I'd, I've been managing people for 20 years. I find it so much easier to work hard at keeping people that are there that have already proven their value to me, keep them happy, versus having to bring on new people and retrain. So keep, keep up, work on employee retention and satisfaction. Again, these are things that executives get this aligned so as your teams are working out, they understand. This is part of your values. So now, what do we do to start? You may have done a couple of practices with your superstars, um, but now you're like, where do I go without my superstars? Right? We've proved out that Agile can work. So what do we have to do? So first thing you need to start thinking is, what are the teams? So we're not, we're not at the scale yet, right? We're still step two. Step one is we've proven it out in a couple of experiments. Now where do we go? Um, look at your teams. Contrary to what I've seen is look at teams that are going to high impact. So if you have some revenue goal you have, some product you want to do, Pick the teams that support that. You want to show that this is really going to bring value on. I found a lot of companies get nervous and they'll pick, let's take something that if it fails, it doesn't really have an impact. The problem with that is if it's successful, it really doesn't have an impact either. So go for something, it's a high impact team, show that you believe in it as leaders, show you believe in it, get the big people in there so that when you have that success, um, you can make sure it's shared and people will say, hey, look what we did, this high visibility thing. We did this methodology and it was great. So when you're setting up a team, what constitutes a team? Um, for a while now, everything has been siloed by I am a QA person, um, I am a, an engineer, I am this. Very siloed by your tech skills. And the idea of a team is go away from that. Like put everybody together that needs to get the job done, whatever that team is. Oftentimes, um, we, have, we have a, a division in um, Pivotal that's new product development. So that's often a product manager, a designer, and engineers. Um, put them together in the team. So as you're building out what you're doing, think of what you're needing to go from idea to production. That should be the makeup of your team. If there's a testing ne tester needed in there, make them a part of your team. QA shouldn't be like, here, we're giving you this stuff tested. It's, Come and be a part of our team. Sit with us. Eat those two pizza pies every day and get fat with us. <laughs> so how do you set up a team? What are the certain things you need when you're putting together your teams? So don't set up an agile team unless all of these things are here in place. Okay, This has to happen. These are the prerequisites to your team starting. So one, as we, we mentioned, like focus on a business opportunity, all right? Make sure there's something that at the end of the day you could start showing. One of the companies I worked with a few years ago, um, they were doing a, a single sign-on for a mobile device, right? How to do that on a mobile device. How, th the challenge was we needed to get something out of the door. I think we had 60 days to get it done. So high visibility, big challenge sent into the company. Um, the success of that was going to be noticeable, right? And it was new in the marketplace at the time, so it was something that wasn't there. It really could have been a whole new revenue share for the marketplace. Something good or, good or bad, it was going to be visible. That's the kind of stuff I'd say you get started doing that. They should have these outcomes, okay? In the case I had, is like we needed to get something, a small sample that we could show. You could go into and have single sign-on on your phone um, set up. Leaders, we talked about the different values. 
you do need to give the team auto autonomy. If you're going to be in there micromanaging everything they do, that's going to slow them down. They're going to fail if they need somebody to sign off on every decision they make. There's no way in that document Katie showed that you're going to come up and understand every single thing that's going to be encountered when you're on the ground. Things change. Embrace the change. It's just part of the world. How many people have gone through life where nothing has changed from when they planned it out up front? Anyone? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's just not going to happen. So let the team understand, you know, let them understand all of the things, your values, your risks, all of what is in your environment, and then give them the autonomy to make the changes they need without getting approvals. Um, staff it right. Right? Do not staff it. We get hit on my team with security, right? Security is always, always, already comes in there. And oftentimes what we find is work, 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 put it in front of the security team, and they say, X, no, you can't do it. Bring security into your team. Make sure everybody who's going to have input to what has to happen is available as part of the team to be there. So you, again, you're going in the right direction. There's people there to give you the input you need. Set all this up up front. And passionate, like you don't want people who are trying to sabotage it. Um, <laughs> they, they're going to slow you down, and they're going to look for reasons why this is going to fail. You don't need that. Using these principles. So I, I start with values, principles, and practices less. And that's the exact order I believe you need to go there. Um, there's so many different flavors of Agile that Katie pointed out. Make sure your people understand what this is. It's doing for the business, doing the right thing, not necessarily fa following a backlog story by story. That's a tool. But use your judgment to say, you know what? We learned this thing. We didn't know it at the beginning of the iteration. But boy, we learned something now. And it's really important. It wasn't in this iteration. Well, we're going to pull it in. I, I, don't, I don't believe in being so rigid with the practices that they override giving the value you need to your business. So they're good frameworks to start with. but. Make sure your people understand and have those principles to say, I'm going to do the right thing using this as a framework, but if I have to go outside the lines a little bit, I'm going to have to go outside the lines a little bit. You also need to not put, there's also times like, I am the, in, the middle person between my dev teams and my end users. Break that away. Get your developers, get your team working with the end users. They need to hear that feedback. They need to speak to them. That person who's in the middle can be like a person that coordinates the sessions, let them talk to each other, but have them talking. They need to hear the feedback. They need to see the reaction when somebody's going on there. Are they hitting a key 15 times before they're seeing anything? Seeing that slowness, the latency issues, like that's going to give them an idea about where they need to improve as opposed to filter through. Um, I don't know if everybody played that game phone when you uh, you, know, you would go around a circle. Yeah. And, and suddenly the message at the end is very different. So have the direct communication. Communication is one of the biggest fa reasons things fail in this world. So get rid of that. Minimize that. Again, this is aligned with that. Get those rapid feedback going. Make sure that they're sitting there and put together prototypes. Get the feedback loop. Again, if you wait, the longer you wait to get feedback, in my team, we do one week iterations. Um, and I, I see Sean, you're out here in there. So you've worked with us before. One week iterations, it gives you good feedback, right? In a week, if we've gone totally in the wrong direction, in a week, we know it um, and we can fix it, right? If I wait two weeks, I've lost double the amount of time. If I wait four weeks, I've lost a month already. So the sooner I go and I could cost correct and I get the feedback, the more likely I'm going to be successful in hitting the mission of delivering this new product or increasing revenue. Senior executives, that, your job is changing now. You're not out there to tell, do this, do that. You're out there to help the, the team when they get stuck. They will get stuck, especially in enterprises that have been around. You've got processes that are in place for good reasons. This change is going to show you where the intent of these processes still needs to be maintained. You need to, still need to have secure systems. How you're going to execute on it is going to change. So you need executives in there to say, I no longer need to do this. Here, I'm going to remove this blocker for you. Help the teams, unstick the teams, be there as a servant leader for your teams as opposed to, when are you getting this done? I want this by tomorrow. Your team shouldn't have to work crazy hours. Was that five minutes? Ten. Ten, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, your team shouldn't have to work crazy hours in order to achieve your larger goals. Thank you. For you should be there as an enabler, not as a taskmaster. 
Also, make sure your teams have the right tools they need. Like, so we believe in test-driven development. Um, automate, get your automation in there. That's going to save you a lot from that time to market. Get automation there. Your teams will talk to you about what's slowing them down. Put in there as much automation. You know, you're at Spring. You're hearing about all of these wonderful ways to help your developers today. Um, give them the technology. That's what your job is going to be as an executive. Enable them and give them the right things they need. Let them focus on the coding features they need to build. And when you're done, celebrate. Like you need to, you need to make sure everybody in the company. It could be town halls. It could be newsletters. It could be going to different teams meetings for other teams. Share these celebrations. The other teams in the organization need to know this as leaders, this is what you want to see. These are the things you're going to be celebrating throughout the company. Everybody wants to be a part of success. So when you talk about the successes to everybody, it's going to get them enthused. So now you've got to scale up. So how do you go from this few teams that you may have been doing and get it to a broader? So first thing I recommend is you have to have a, a learning hub. So you've learned a lot in the first few engagements. So in the first few, you may do two, three, four teams doing these key products. They've learned a lot, right? They've hit the things. You have to get that information together. Put together people from those teams. It could start off as office hours. It could expand to, you know, we're going to have one day a week for training. Get all of the information. Don't lose it. Every team should not have to relearn what the first few teams have learned. Set aside time for these people to be dedicated. I say, simplest thing is office hours. Every Tuesday and Thursday from like 1 to 3, come to me with questions. Have them start putting together the documentation of what they've done, what worked for them, so other teams can learn from them. Um, you also then have to say, okay, well, where do I go? I've, I'm big. I've got like thousands of teams. How do I figure out which of the teams to get started with first? There's different ways to do that. Some of the successes we've seen is look at your, your customer experiences. So you may have a website that has different features on it. Look at these different features. It could be your search. It could be like paying. Break these down, and then within that, break them down to what's a user experience, right? So that's usually your UI. Break it down to teams that support that. You may have shared services behind it, teams that do that. Put them into these different categories, and then start looking, where am I trying to make the biggest impact? You may say, hey, this sh shared services, which is like validating you know, my sign-ons, this slows us down everywhere. We're getting people leaving our sites because it's taking so long. They won't buy. They just leave when they're trying to like validate their account. That's where you start. If it's, hey, I've got these UIs that I know we've had bad feedback. This is where I need to improve. That's where you start. Breaking them down into the different groupings um, will help you kind of see where do I get started. When you start scaling, you may start with three teams. Then once you have some success, move it up to six teams, 10. And then I'll see organizations that will go up to like another 50 teams. Right? Once you get the bases in there, you're, you can grow exponentially. If you have offices in different locations, you could do small in each location and run parallel growth, growth spans. Another way is if you're using domain-driven design principles, you could break it down by that and then look at which of the areas, again, in the business that I'm struggling with that I'm trying to improve and I'm trying to grow. Breaking these down will give you a lot of insight into the things you need to improve in your organization. You may find your teams are not properly staffed, or I don't have a team that does that, or my team that does this thing I want to do is really five different teams. It may help you decide, I've got to restructure myself. But the insight you're going to get for that is going to what's going to help you scale. Um, this transformation hub, once you start getting more teams doing it, this has to grow. People have to be dedicated. I like to have people rotating into this. So I've done some agile things. I get a time to shift in here. And this is where I'm going to be creating a cookbook. Um, in Pivotal, we call a cookbook. Some people used to call it documentation. We don't call it documentation. And we call it a cookbook with recipes because recipes change. Everybody puts their little you know, tweaks on it. And that's what we look at. Document what you've done. And we do cookbooks for technical things as well as for process. Hey, when well, we've been stuck because we couldn't get security here, this is what we've done. Now everybody who's going to have that problem can look in there and they could say what they've done. And you'll get the continuous improvement from that. Um, communication plan, I mentioned that earlier, so important. You need to figure out ways. How do people communicate? How does the successes of some teams get out there. Sometimes I've had to go, and we have a group of people in our transformation hub, we go out to the different you know, weekly meetings for the different teams, just five minutes on an agenda of existing team calls, just to say, here's what's out there, here's what's done. You may have a wiki, a site for people to get there, figure out, and I would recommend multiple communication plans, not everybody reads that. 
Email is the easiest, but uh, it's <laughs> probably the least valuable. Get your teams the training that they need. Share these successes. Town halls are great. Somewhere where you're getting everybody in there to hear it. Um, give your teams the opportunities to experiment. It's okay to fail because we learn from our failures a lot more than we learn from our successes. Give them the opportunity to try something different. Um, allow them to self-assess themselves. Uh, see, see what they think they could get better. And do retrospectives. Um, you're only going to get better if you do your continuous retrospectives. And just quickly go through this. I know we're running out of time. Some of the challenges you're going to see and how we address them is I have a monolithic application. It's too big. I can't do this. Insight to that is maybe I have to break up this monolith. Maybe having multiple teams ser serve on this, maybe I need to re-architect it. Great insight. If it's a critical thing you need to build upon, start breaking it up into smaller teams. Um, also, there are just times, like safe is a big thing out there because you have multiple teams that will impact something. The communication um, is, is critical. Safe has one way of doing it. What I've also seen very successful is Every team has their retro, 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, their stand-up, 9 o'clock in the morning. You get all of the things that come out of that 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 team can't solve. Goes to the retro, that'll be at 9.15, the um, stand-up at 9.15 in the morning. If you can, and that's cross teams. So maybe each of the 10 teams, they have a representative, if, they can, if they're stuck, to go to that 9.15 meeting. If amongst them they still can't unstick it, you've got the next one that brings in executives in. So you just have something in place that could keep escalating it till you get to the point where someone could resolve it. Have that on a daily basis. This way you're not waiting for the next PI meeting to say, hey, we have to change course from what we've done in the past. You get everybody involved so you could quickly get responsibility, get reaction, and, and take action on it. Other things is your process. Again, you need to question, do we still need these things in place? How do we make this better? And again, that's where your leaders could come in there and support. Let's talk about this. What are other ways we can and do? These are just typical ones we see. How do we do this? A lot of automation can be put in play today for things that were done very manually before. Look at pipelines. Like that's, that's a big thing today you've probably heard about. The pipelines could help you with this automation. And culture, you as leaders, like lead by example. You can't expect your teams to be able to deliver in this model if you're going to tell them exactly what you want to do. You can't be rigid in terms of, I want this by now with this scope of work. You have to trust your teams and build up to the teams. Um, you also have to understand people are afraid. If they've been doing summer, where do they fit in? So again, you as executives, jobs will change. Um, if you're in a QA team, well, I, I just worked with a customer a few weeks ago, and there was a whole QA team, great people. They did manual testing. We're teaching them how to create automated end-to-end um, -end testing. They're getting a new skill set in there. They're working very closely with the development teams so that everything can be automatically tested. They're excited. They, we turn their fear into something exciting because now they're, their skill sets, their resumes are getting better. They're not afraid of, like, I'm going to be irrelevant. They're excited about new career opportunities. Your managers may be more than just people managed. They may be back to being hands-on. I still am hands-on. I still do delivery even though I manage a team of 20 people. Um, so I'll get this out to everybody, but basically 13 steps to maximize result, cultural change, right? Go from command control to trust. Treat your stars fairly. We always take our stars and we put them in every situation that's really hard and we burn them out. It's not fair to them. We want to make them happy too. Hire for enthusiasm. It's so easy to hire for like checkbox. They know Java. They know .NET. They've done this. Hire for enthusiasm. People should be excited about the job they're going to do. That could hurt them more than anything else. Isn't it enthusiasm and curiosity? I always hire for curiosity. When you're, everybody does annual meetings, reviews, well, not everybody, but if you're doing that, you rank people based on certain things. That, that teaches them to gain the system to do this. Rank them about collaboration. Do their people like to work with them? Are their feedback from their teammates all positive? Continuous feedback. People should. People should know where they stand. You shouldn't wait for an annual review, even a quarterly review, to understand where your employees are in the organization. As a manager, you need to make sure they have continuous feedback about the good, the bad, areas of improvement. Regular one-on-ones with your people is, man is really critical for this success. Give them the training they need. Celebrate those successes. We've talked about that. Make sure everybody in your organization understands this is the behavior we want to see modeled. It should be the behavior of everything we've been talking about. And keep transparency out there. Let everybody know. There shouldn't be secrets. People, 
the rumor mill is the fastest way of communication. Like you want anything negative, boy, you can make one comment and that's going to spread through your organization faster. So make everything transparent so that everybody is truly aware of what's going on. Obviously, some things can't be, but say, there's things I can't talk about now so that people will trust the leadership on what they're doing and they don't feel like things are being held back from them. Uh, automation, allow everything your team needs. Try as hard as you can. I know it takes time sometimes. Improve that process so that the teams have the tools that they need to be successful. And again, you as leaders need to embrace this. You can't expect people to act one way different than you. It's like with a child. You can't tell your child to act one way if you're going to show different behavior yourself. And finally, understand that middle manager role is a good chance it's going it's to change. Own that and show how it can change where people feel like they still are adding a lot of value. Um, it's a good change, not a bad change. And do what works. Uh, I'll go back to that if you want to take pictures, but uh, oh, I can't go backwards because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, repeat what works. So there's no one thing. One of the challenges with all these like scaled models is everybody tries to make it very prescriptive. Do what works in your organization and then do more of it. And if it doesn't work, don't do it, right? <laughs> like, I mean, just use your common sense, and you, every team doesn't have to do exactly the same way. It may sound easy, but if your team is getting delivery, if you're getting products out the door, you're getting feedback on the products, you're doing things faster, you're improving, you have happy people, zero turnover, that's the kind of stuff you want to repeat. So keep learning and keep evolving, um, and be patient. You know, you're going to scale maybe five teams, and then 10 teams at a time, and then 50, and then 100. If you've got thousands of teams, that takes time. Be patient. Just keep celebrating these successes. And I think it just made it in time. So um, I don't think we have time for questions, but Katie and I will be outside if you do have any questions. And thank you for coming. Thank you.